<laughs> South Africa today is a sea of youth with no direction, no guidance. These kids roam around the townships. They grow up in shacks, in squatter camps. Those kids there, they don't have educated parents. They grow up there, their mothers are not working. They don't have anybody to look up to. In the township, in actual fact, being a failure is accepted. Nobody is going to punish you for that. Nobody's going to tell you to dream big. Nobody's going to tell you anything. So it's actually a huge challenge that we're facing in this country, which is to try and pull the youth back. Traditionally, people have always looked at Africa as a basket case, and they've said Africans are not able to do it for themselves. So when they're sick, we send medicines. But when people are starving to death, there's a food drop somewhere, and the food disappears or it goes rotten. As far as we're concerned, that's a superficial way of thinking about development. Africans have genius, they have the ability to create for themselves. And it was really around that philosophy that we decided to start to create the first free university in South Africa. Come quick, come quick. Let's go to class. Come, 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 come. How are you doing? We wanted to prove that it was possible to take a child off the streets who had come through a very disadvantaged education and turn them into a chartered accountant, turn them into a merchant banker, a stockbroker, Java programmer. Because if we could prove that it was possible, we could take the country forward into a new reality. For the next three years, do nothing else but work towards your vision. You cannot copy your friend's vision. See it, guys. Please picture it. Do you have a vision of your own? Yes. Specific. Yes. I even know the color of my car. Guess what? It's black. black. Most universities, it's a money-based model. The students have to pay a lot of money. The faculty get paid a lot of money. Everything is just expensive. We're just like, you know, a mother teaches her child for free. Education should be free. Yeah, at CEDA, I think you guys did quite a good job. I used to come out there and it was really well run. CEDA is unique in that our students run the campus itself and obviously that helps us to cut down a lot of costs. We've got our cleaning services, we've got your basic operations. By having our students running the campus, they start to understand basic principles of management, basic principles of operations. As a result, by the time they go out to the workplace, they've already been acquiring a certain level of skills. We've had to find a way of getting materials, teachers, money, making it accessible so that we could reinvent this paradigm of university. If we get the support and if people adopt these ideas, we could open up universities, colleges, vocational schools and relevant high schools right across the whole of Africa for next to nothing and they could be fully self-sufficient. It was tough, man, growing up here, yeah, you know. Uh, not much resources, not much money, not much place. I was raised in Orange Farm by a single mother. We had time we would not have money or lunch when going to school. I wake up, I have nothing to eat. I go to school, I have nothing to eat. I mean, when I got to see it, I was just 17. I'd been taking drugs at that point. Um, and when, when, I, when I came here, it was a completely different environment. He was just wild in the beginning. He was insane. And slowly but surely, he started to completely transform his life. It's been like a quantum leap in growth for me. I have grown manifold. Philly, how's it going? Okay. It's all good. <laughs> He's now created his own school in Orange Farm out of nothing. He's just taken the Cedar example, and I think he's got about 25 students of his own, and he's an amazing, amazing human being. Oh, this, here's an announcement. Guys, we're going to be having a high-speed internet connection in a month's time. Now it's confirmed. In South Africa, we have this concept of Ubuntu, that is, I am who I am because we are who we are, that we all belong to each other. None of us exist in isolation. So Tukiso is one of many, many students who's proving this concept of Ubuntu, giving so much more than we could have ever dreamed back into his community. I started off living in a shack. It was a bit challenging to get your things done. You would have to pick a time in the middle of the night where you're going to wake up and go sit in the kitchen and you would have your little spot and start doing your own homework. So it was quite a challenge. Mina grew up in Soweto. Her mother died when she was in her second last year of school. I was angry. I think I didn't want to go on. I said, why? 
Why me? Why now? Why do you keep on doing this to us? I had no plan. It's incredibly rare in South Africa today to find a young person who grew up in a normal, stable family. They just pretty much don't exist. Cedar found her, brought her into the university. I believe that Cedar believed in me. From that experience, I've learned to believe in myself. I've learned to believe that if I think just a slightest thought that I can do this, I have the potential to do that. She got snapped up into a job, in fact. She's out working at SAP out of Germany. It's one of the biggest software companies in the world. Knock, knock. She's still living in Soweto, where she grew up in the family house, and she's now supporting her sister. So she's pretty much become the breadwinner of this family of orphans. Typically, people say that it takes a community to raise a child. Sida say, we say no, it takes a child to raise a village. Now, every month, I buy groceries for my family, I send them money. Two months ago, we started a business for my mom, uh, selling clothes and shoes. That gives me really, really deep joy. I'm gaining happiness because I know this is the beginning of a new life. Sometimes when you're on a situation of poverty, né? You don't believe that you might come out of it just like that. After how many years, I can see where we're going now. Yes, I'm proud of him. And I hope that one day I'll be able to build my mom a really big house. And, you know, she should love, my mom should live like a queen. She is a queen of my heart. <laughs> Today, we have 3,300 graduates earning 25 million US dollars in salaries this year. And that's money going back to families that just had absolutely nothing. So we're creating a human chain. It's a human network. And I do believe we could change Africa. And I do believe we could change the developing world if we could create a human network where everybody's holding hands. It's only really selfishness that stops us from building stable, decent societies. When we come to see that we all from different backgrounds, but something makes us one. We have this will, we have this drive, we have this passion of wanting to bring change. It encourages its students to really fly high, really, really go even beyond the skies. It creates leaders, you know. We are the leaders of this country. And this is really what CEDA is trying to do, is be a life raft that pulls people out of this majority of the population into the other side of the river where there is employment and opportunity. And as we pull them, they pull everybody else behind them. And that is what our model is.